Hello EO Masters! We had to wait almost two years for the next release of SNAP, ESA's Earth Observation Processing and Analysis application. But is it worth the waiting? Let's have a look at the new release. Before we start looking at the details of the release, a short disclaimer. I led the development team till June 2023 and I worked on several of the new features. Just wanted to say that. Let's start with the most obvious change, the graphics design. There is a new startup screen, new icons and so on. Also the look and feel changed and Snap looks now more modern, I think. It's quite nice and refreshing. The change is also noticeable on the website, where plenty of the image have been changed. The second noticeable change is the change in the structure of the toolboxes. Sentinel-1, 2 and 3 toolboxes are replaced with a microwave and an optical toolbox. The microwave toolbox combines Sentinel-1 and the Radarsat toolbox. Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3 and the Proba-V toolbox are merged into the optical toolbox. This release contains many changes under the hood. They were needed for the future of SNAP. Necessary to continue to provide an application that is at the forefront of technology and offers a high performance and a great user experience. This is the reason why this release contains less new features. A lot of time was spent in the groundwork. For example, several of the major third-party libraries used by SNAP have been updated to more recent versions. GDAL is now version 3.7.2 and GeoTools is at version 28.2 and several other libraries have been updated too. But the most important updates were those of NetBeans, which is now 11.3, and Java itself, JDK 11. To make Snap using these new versions took a big amount of development time. The updates and the restructuring led to several changes in the API. These changes of interest of developers are noted in the Snap wiki. You can find the link in the video description. Thanks to these updates, Snap works again on macOS. The GUI was broken since the Ventura update. Snappy, the Snap Python bridge has also been reworked. The module name is now ESA Snappy. This solves the conflict with other Python modules with the same name. And Snappy now supports Python up to version 3.10. It has been promoted to a new top level module and is available on GitHub. This shall allow to update it more easily. Helpful resources are linked in the video description. With this release, Snap supports the ARM processor architecture. This is most important for the Mac users. The development team did not only work under the hood, but also implemented new features for the users. The microwave toolbox now supports ETAT products, extended timing annotation dataset. This dataset is a new auxiliary product for Copernicus Sentinel-1 data. It has been developed by DLR under contract to ESA. It provides users with corrections to improve geometric accuracy of Sentinel-1 SLC images to centrometric levels. The microwave toolbox is now able to read and display ETAT products and apply ETAT correction for GRD and SMSLC products. You find links about ETAT in the video description. Two more products have been added to the list of supported data formats. The Sentinel-1 COC GRD products and the Cosmos SkyMet second generation products in HDF and GeoTIFF format. Noteworthy for the optical toolbox is that JPEG 2000 data files of Sentinel-2 are now read directly without the conversion to temporary TIFF files. This makes the S2 cache obsolete and saves disk space on the user system. Additionally, a geolocation issue with Sentinel-3 WST products has been solved and Landsat C2 data provided as TAR file um, from the USGS can now be opened directly. So no need to extract the data beforehand anymore. 
Snap in general has also been improved. The content of several help pages has been updated to bring the help in line with the state of the software. The startup time of Snap has been shortened by doing the initialization of the product library and Jira only when it is first used. The product library can now access the Copernicus data space. Also fixes and improvements have been made to several product readers. The release notes tell that Snap plugin dialog has been customized to allow voting for plugins. Unfortunately, I don't see this feature implemented. Oh, it's, it's not showing in the UI. Maybe there's still something missing. And there are even more improvements. The following do not directly provide new features in Snap, but improve its usage in general or help users in other ways. There is now a dedicated release notes page named Public Roadmap and Change Log. This is very good and useful. You can navigate back and forth through the versions and see what has changed and what is planned for the future. The help pages are not only available within Snap Desktop, but are now also available online. This makes the help more accessible and sharing links to the help pages is now possible. Those help pages include the help of all plugins available at the plugin repository. This allows to read the help of tools you haven't installed yet. The build pipeline that creates the Snap installer has been redesigned from scratch. But it does not only create the installer file, but also performs the automatic testing of the software. This includes the integration tests for data readers and writers, the GPF operators and thousands of small unit level tests. This shall ensure faster development cycles, but even more important, a better quality assurance of Snap releases. The following is of interest for developers who want to provide code to the Snap project. When contributing a code change to the Snap project, a contributor license agreement, CLA, must be signed now. Its purpose is to clarify the legal rights and responsibilities of both the contributors and the project maintainers. In the SNAP wiki it is described how the CLA can be signed and you find a link in the video description to it. Now let's come to an end of this SNAP 10 release review. The full list of software changes contains more than 120 issues that have been addressed in this release. This doesn't sound much, but we need to keep in mind that some took several months to resolve. That's it for the main new features. Let me give you a short summary and let me tell you what I think about this release. I think the thematic restructuring makes a lot of sense. All the toolboxes did support more platforms and sensors as only the Sentinels. Also, there was no clear separation between the S2 and the Sentinel 3 toolbox because features of the one toolbox were applicable to sensors of the other toolbox. Only that Sentinel 1 toolbox has been renamed to Microwave is a bit confusing, I think. It indicates that also the SMOS toolbox would be included, which is not. Maybe Radar toolbox would have been a better choice. But maybe SMOS will be included in the future. In this release, long outstanding tasks such as updating the libraries were addressed. This was very necessary to keep Snap at the edge of technology. However, further updates are still necessary. Improvements to GPS, its performance and memory consumption are needed too. And I know the developers have this on the roadmap. I think it is a little unfortunate that the update for the ARM architecture was only done for Mac. The chance to also support Windows on ARM has been missed. Maybe this will come with Snap 11. In general, this is a really good release, even if it has fewer new features than previous releases. But by improving the basis, everyone will benefit. In the future, users get a more reliable application and the developers can develop new features faster and provide higher quality. I really hope the next release won't take so long. Otherwise, I can imagine Snap might lose users because it can't hold track with the development in the EO and the software domain. 
Finally, as now Snap10 has been released, uh, I can release my own plugins now. There is a free EO Masters toolbox, which provides um, several usability and other enhancements. And there's a data validation environment, Davalian, which helps to validate generated data, even if you haven't used Snap for the generation. And there's a little uh, third free plugin, which is still a secret, but I hope this will also be released soon. And if this is not enough, there is also the pro version of the EOMasters toolbox in development with new features and tools for the users. But this will take a little longer till it can be released. I'm excited. Are you? Tschüss and goodbye.